Okay, so we're going to be talking about the rules of indices, and there's two separate rules I want to show you today. The first one is this one, which is where we say a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. Now you look at that and you think, oh, that's a little bit boring. And what it means is, is a is any number and m is any power. But I'm going to give you a practical example and hopefully that will just clarify things a little bit. So what it really means is 7 to the power of 3 multiplied by 7 to the power of 2 equals 7 to the power of 5. And the reason that works is if you look at that, that's 7 to the power of 3 or 7 cubed, which means 7 times 7 times 7. Or, I'm going to write it longhand, 7 times 7 times 7. So that's that bit there. This one is 7 squared. So I'm going to write this out again, 7 times 7. 7 squared is where it's 7 times 7. And if I add up all those 7s, I'm going to end up with 7 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the answer is 7 to the power of 5. So you can either use the law, or you can write it out longhand. And it works just as well, whichever way you look at it. And the other, the other option to that, or the other slight difference to that, is 7 to the power of 3 divided by 7 to the power of 2. And that equals 7. Because multiplication and division are opposite to one another. And if, it re if I rewrite that, that 7 to the power of 3 becomes 7 times 7 times 7. That divided by 7 squared. Now I'm going to write my division a little bit differently. I'm going to write it like that. So I'm going to put the division underneath. So 7 squared is 7 times 7. It means exactly the same. I've just written it as a fraction. Now... If you look to some of the other videos, you'll um, hopefully see that whatever you do above the line, you've got to do to the bottom of the line. So in order to make this work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through the top initially by 7. So if I divide that by 7, I get 1. And if I divide the bottom by 7, I also get 1. And again, I'm going to do it to the top and bottom in order to make sure that I've only got a small amount left at the end of my calculation. So 7 divided by 1. Is, uh, 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. So what I'm left with now is 1 times 1, which is 1, times 7, which is 7, and then 1 times 1, which is 1, so therefore 7. So in other words, I've proven the second law, which is this one here, which is a to the power of m, divided by a to the power of n equals a to the power of m minus n. Okay, so those are my two laws that I need to remember. Now these are round about GCSE C grade questions, so I'm going to give you two examples of C grade questions and hopefully be able to use these laws and pick up a couple of marks in your exam. So the first one is, is 3 to the power of 6 divided by 3 to the power of 2. Well, 3 to the power of 6 divided by 3 to the power of 2, you can either write it out like that and write it out longhand, or you can use the law. In this particular case, I'm going to use the law. So I'm going to say that means it's exactly the same as 3 to the power of 6 minus 3 to the power of 2. So I'm using exactly this law over here. So 3 to the power of 6 minus 2, which is 3 to the power of 4. Okay, what we'll do then, I'll just do it longhand, and then we can prove it. So 3 to the power of 6, it's going to take me a while to write, is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 and times 3. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then at the bottom, 3 times 3, which is 3 squared. I'm going to divide through by 3, there's 1. And there's the other one, so that becomes 1, that becomes 1. Divide through by 3 again, that becomes 1, that becomes 1. I can't do anything else with it, so I'm left with 1 times 1, which is 1. 3, 3, 3, 3, which is 3 to the power of 4, divided by 1 times 1, 
which is 1. So in other words, 3 to the power of 4. So I can either use the law, or I can write it out longhand. Okay, final example is this one, which is actually, what's a GCSE uh, C grade question? 6 to the power of 3 times 6 divided by 6 to the power of 2. Okay, a couple of things you can do is either you can use the laws or you can write it out longhand. On this particular case, and I think this time I definitely am going to use the law, but it's just as easy for you to write it out longhand if you wanted to. So, what I would say is 6 to the power of 3 multiplied by 6 to the power of 1. I'm going to use that law. That becomes 6 to the power of 4 divided by 6 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to use this law because I've got 6 to the power of 4 divided by 6 to the power of 2. So the answer then is 6 to the power of 2 or if you prefer 6 squared. So that's two laws that you need to remember. This one and this one. Two practical demonstrations of how the laws can work for you. And then we've looked at two separate exam questions, both of which are worth one or two marks in an exam and they're round about level C in GCSE. Hope that's okay for you. Um, and if you go through to the other videos, we'll talk about some of the other laws of indices.